Yeah, I think so. I think uh, a decision had to be made. And I always feel with a manager, if you've got a similar record to the guy before who you replace, so Rafa Benitez won a similar sort of run, I think one win in 12 or something like that, you can't complain then when, the, when the, the club decide to make a change when you've got a similar sort of record. So we're going to look at Everton this season and the, the underlying numbers as well, really. So we look where they are, the points. We, we know the joint bottom of the table with... Southampton. The problem is the underlying numbers in terms of expected goals, expected goals against, is pretty much where they are. You know, so yes, they should have scored a few more goals. We get that, but we know they've lacked goals with, with Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Actually, they're actually against, and, and if you actually look at the goals they've conceded, I mean, the fact Jordan Pickford has been playing out of his skin has meant they've actually got a better de defensive record than, than what those numbers tell you. But what the kill has been, I think for Frank especially, is that Everton have become such an easy touch. And that's not just on Frank, that's on those players. Those players, for me, that group of players is not good enough. We know that, that's obvious. But they shouldn't be bottom of the league. And what's the absolute killer is that Everton, who I always associate from when I was a child and when I played against them as being a tough place to go, uncompromising, aggressive... They're an easy touch. They're the easiest touch in the Premier League. If you're on a bad run, you want to play Everton. And these stats bear it out. So they lose to West Ham at the weekend. West Ham are in a horrendous run. One of the last eight who they beat, Everton. Wolves won two of the last ten, Everton and West Ham. Bournemouth on a horrific run. The only one game they've won was Everton. And Southampton, exactly the same. So when you're on a bad run, you want to come up against Everton. So there's no doubt about that. Now, I've just said it was right to change the manager. But nobody knows a football club better than their own supporters. Their own supporters haven't got banners in the crowd for Frank Lampard. They've got them for Farhad Mashiri and the board. And I said on this programme about six months ago, 12, six to 12 months ago, Everton are the worst run club in the country. And it wasn't a flippant remark, I believed it. And I'm not saying that as an ex-Liverpool player. I'm saying it as an ex-Everton fan. And when I made that comment, Everton got in touch with me. And I actually admired it. That they were almost on the front foot trying to defend their club. And I thought, well, OK, fair enough. We say things in the media and sometimes people come back at you. But I didn't think I was wrong when I said it then, and I'm not wrong when I said it now. So you start with the owner, Farhad Mashiri. He doesn't know what he's doing, but he's got a lot of money. And, and he's put a lot of money in. He's put a lot of money in. He's got a very unhealthy relationship with Keir Jirabshin, who I think that partnership has caused a lot of problems at Everton. The same person's players are coming in, managers are getting changed left, right and centre. He'll ring you up as well. <laughs> yeah, he will do. I'll be waiting for it. Why does every Everton manager fail? Why? So Frank's gone. I'm saying he deserves to go, OK. But you've got a young, up-and-coming English manager. You've got a Champions League winning manager in Rafa Benitez and Carlo Ancelotti. You've got a young, up-and-coming foreign manager, Silva. Koeman has been around the world, managed lots of teams. So when every club fails, you've got to look at the top. So that's Fahad Mishiri. We know it's a mess. But... The big problem as well at Everton, there's a massive divide between Fahad Mashiri, Bill Kenwright and De Denise Barrett-Baxendale. No, everybody knows that. Everyone in the city, everyone around the club. And I actually look at it and think, what is the role of Bill Kenwright and Denise at that football club? It's not financial, it's not. And the owner is not listening to them. He does his own thing. He pays the money. He's very, he's very rarely there as well. I think that was his first game, wasn't it, since October 21? Yeah, but my point now. is, if they're there for expertise, they're not listening to him. So from that point of view, what's the point in them being there? The other thing I want to get to is what happened last week at Goodison. There was, a, there was a protest that everybody knew about that was going to happen on the back of the Southampton game. It wasn't going to be in the game. It was going to be at the end of the game. Everton's board put out a statement saying there's been, there's been threats and I'm not denying that. And if that is true, that is bang out of order. Bang out of order. But for me, I think Everton's board, or at least somebody, should have been at that game. 
And the statement he put out as a football club, I thought was bang out of order. I felt to me that they demonised the whole fan base. And again, I'm not saying they're telling lies in terms of threats, but that comes with the name of the game. Physical to, threats and violence against well, board members? Yeah, it may have been. Who knows? There was nothing reported to the police. We, we need to say that. But what I would say is they threw the whole fan base under the bus, and you don't do that, especially in the city where we're from. In Liverpool, you back your own. Whether it's family, whether it's your football club, that's what you do. Now, they were there to criticise them and give them stick and want them out the club. Those supporters kept them up last year. Don't forget that. Now, the supporters are protesting against them and want them out the club. They felt they couldn't go to that game. On the back of putting that statement out, I don't know how they go back to the game or go back to Goodison. Because Frank Lampard's gone, yes. But then banners aren't going anyway until those people have left the club. And I think until the serious change there, they're I, not I, going to get I, the fans back on side. And I, it was the I, fans who I, kept them look, up. I agree with 99.9% of what, everything he said there, but I think you've got to be careful because they were, they, were, they were actually asked not to go to the game. That's what the statement said. Now, to be fair, that's a lie. That's a lie, but I don't believe that would have been. That could have been a threat against them that they were warned by the police not to go to the game. And to be fair, if that's happened, then we, you know, there, there, there is a line there. You don't put that statement out the, against the statement, your own The statement said, Jamie, the statement said, the statement said that our that. board of directors has been ordered not to yeah, attend I, a I match on the I, I don't think that demonised the fan base at all, to be honest with you. He threw their own fans under the bus. No, I don't think they did that. He did. I don't think he didn't did need that. to put that statement out, whether one went or they didn't go or whatever they didn't do. You don't that's put that statement out and allow every other supporter in this country to look at Everton supporters no, I don't think and they basically tie them all with the same thing. People understand the passion of Everton fans. Every Everyone. fan? No, but people understand the passion. What's what Everton fans are? People understand, having been to Goodison Park, you've been going for 30-odd years, I've been going for 25 years, played there. Look, we know how passionate Everton fans are. And to be fair, there'll be Everton fans who will feel let down by the fans who threatened or violence against the owners. So I don't, I don't think they demonise I don't. I think that's a bit of a smokescreen, red herring, whatever you want to call it. For me, the bigger problem with the owners is the actual lack of football management. I've said it about my club, Manchester United. If after a six, seven-year period you have sustained failure and embedded misery for the fans. At that point, you've got to start looking above the football staff and the coaching staff. You've got to start looking at the very top. And they've got to get it right because it's too big a football club. Everton is a massive football club. We've seen what's happened with Newcastle in the last 12 months since they've obviously got new owners. People will question whether those owners are right or not, but that's another matter. However, the Newcastle fans are back on board again. They're buzzing again to go to football matches. I've been now on Sky for 11 years. They're buzzing because Mike Ashley's gone. But they're also buzzing because they've got great footballers again, they're winning matches and they're just... And that comes feel, with Mike Ashley not being there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying to you. So my point is at this moment in time, Mashiri's going to have to either get it right and get a football... He's not going to get it right. ..a winning football project, or he's going to have to somehow remove the club. They're building, they're building a new stadium, apparently. We've, had, we've had six managers. We've also had three directors of football as well. So that suggests no. they're trying to... No, Dave... They're trying they, to at least steer in Dave, the right get, direction. They, it's they, Kevin Bellwell no, 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 right Dave, now. It doesn't, they're it getting it massively wrong, Dave. Got, sorry for interrupting <laughs> there. What you've just said, it doesn't show they're trying to move in the, direction, in the right direction. It shows they haven't got a clue what direction they're going in. <laughs> OK, okay so fair, what are they going to do next? No, Dave, they, 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 they've struggled badly on how to run a football club in terms of, you know, the, the, the flirting from Koeman. You, know, you look at this graphic here, they've moved from different styles of managers. They've moved from sort of, if you like, you know, they spent money with them all. If you look at the actual money on the right hand side, but you're going from Koeman to Allardyce, then you're going from Ancelotti to Benitez, then you're going to Lampard. You're moving back and forward from different styles. You sort of, if you like, one end of the spectrum to the other. They are absolutely all over the place when it comes to the identity of the football project that they've got. They have not got an identity at Everton. And I think we're all pretty Clear. Everybody in football is pretty clear of what Everton should be as a football club. It should be high energy, high tempo, getting the fans going, you know, getting the ball directly forward quick as quick as possible. That's what I'm not talking about lump ball, by the way, here. I'm talking about Everton's style of play that you feel that club is. Just as I feel as though my club's got one, you feel like your club might have one. Well, this and There's perhaps two managers that are being talked about right now that might be able to deliver that style of football. Very different, Bielsa. And Deitch. But how can you how can you have Bielsa and Deitch? But we don't know that's the shortlist. No, but what do we? Saying, let's say that was the shortlist. It wouldn't surprise you looking at that list we've seen before: Cumin, Allardyce, you know, uh, Benitez, Bene 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 Ancelotti. I, I hear this all, all the time, and, and, and I, I feel for uh, clubs when they pick a manager because everyone says, "Oh, they're completely different." Have you picked the same manager every time you pick a manager? No, but, you, exactly no, but, the same. No, but the idea is that you try and settle down to fit a manager that fits the style that, of the players. Very, very, how many clubs do that? 
But most, a lot of clubs no, that are don't. well run. We've got two clubs tonight. Tottenham, Tottenham go from a footballer manager to a pragmatic manager. No, but my point is a lot of clubs that are run well, and we don't think they're particularly doing well, do we, Tottenham? They're not in the trophy for how many years. Name me a club my that point, do that. What do you mean, name me a club that do that? Man United never did it. But then, they went with Jose and David Moyes. No, they, and, and I was critical of them. OK, well, name me one that does. You told me for Manchester United should go with Conte again, and I said, no. no. didn't. Sh you t <laughs> Your own record of saying Manchester United should go with Conte. I said, from a style of play point of view, Manchester United have to stick to what they do, which is playing good football in a fast tempo way. Clubs have to pick an identity, pick a group of players that fit an identity, and then bring a coach in that fits that style. That's the ideal scenario. I'm not saying you always get it right, but Everton have moved from one end of the spectrum to the other. They've got no consistency. They're all over the place. And I have to say, you've got to start looking at the players, to be fair. They are a shambles. I mean, some of the mistakes that they're making. They're experienced players, some of them, by the way. It's and a good job we've got a 15-minute delay, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what a way to start the that's show. A, that's um, the trains. <laughs> we'll keep you They're across shambles. what happens at Everton. Remember, still no actual confirmation from them tonight that Lampard has indeed gone, but it seems to be... Uh, what? what does that say? Well, he's, not, he's not gone yet. It hasn't been confirmed by Everton yet. It hasn't been widely... But, but it's been reported that, but, but, but everywhere. But Dave, we that, know it's happened. Dave, right, we're going to move know, on no, now. But that, is, that, is, that is, to be fair, symptomatic of a club that's not organised. That is symptomatic. Possibly. 